Welcome back everybody. Thank you for watching. Today we're going to do a video that I've been getting asked to do for a really long time now and uh, I've just never got around to it. So today we're going to compare the 9mm Hornady Critical Duty and the Hornady Critical Defense. Now if you take these bolts out of the box they actually look uh, pretty much identical but they are designed very differently and uh, designed to do very different things. So today I want to do a few tests with these and see what exactly those differences are. So I'm going to set you guys up on the tripod and we will get started. All right so the critical defense that we have is the 115 grain. I believe that's the only one that they make and the critical duty that we have is the 124 grain plus P. Now I wanted to do the 135 grain plus P because that is what the FBI carries but I realized when I got out here that I was all out of the 135. So the 124s are really popular as well. Now, the critical duties are designed for full-size guns, hence the name critical duty, and they're designed to kind of be a good barrier penetrating round. Now, the critical defense are supposedly designed for smaller, more compact guns and uh, more designed as a self-defense round. So I have two guns out here today. The Glock 17 and the Glock 43. As you can see, the Glock 43 is a small subcompact carry gun, and the Glock 17 is a full sized, um, I guess you could say, duty sized pistol. And we're going to shoot each of these rounds out of each of these guns in a few different tests and see how they do. All right, I got my 20% clear ballistics gel block on the table down there, and I think I need to get some new gel blocks. These are starting to get pretty dark. But first, we're going to shoot the Hornady Critical Duty out of each of these guns and see how it does in the bare ballistics gel. And I have a pack of computer paper behind the gel block just in case these over penetrate. So we're gonna start with the Glock 17. So like I said, this gel block is kind of dark, but it looks like we can still see in there pretty well. So the critical duty went in right there, and you can see that wound cavity in that ballistic shell block. The bullet continued down the gel and stopped right there. It looks like it did fully expand. I will take these bullets out when we're done so we can see. And the critical duty out of the Glock 17 looks like it stopped at about 15 inches in that ballistic shell. The bullet itself is at about 14 and a half, but there was bounce back in that ballistic shell block. So let's do the Glock 43. All right, let's shoot the critical duty out of the Glock 43. All right, the shot from the Glock 43 is the one on the left there. And pretty much identical wound cavities. It looks like the one from the Glock 17 uh, is big a little further down the gel but very similar and the critical duty out of the Glock 43 stopped right there looks like it also expanded really well and also stopped at exactly 15 inches in the ballistics gel block so we will take these bullets out after we're done and see how they look but so far it looks like they performed pretty much identical all right now let's shoot the critical defense and we're starting with the Glock 17. And our critical defense is the one all the way to the right. It's kind of hard to see over here because it's hidden behind the others. Um, I can see on this side of the gel block really well, but I'm not sure if the camera can see in there. But the wound cavity from the critical defense is actually a little bit smaller than the two critical duties. And the bullet came to a stop right there. Definitely expanded really well. And it looks like out of our Glock 17, the critical defense stopped at nine and a half inches into the ballistic shell block. But keep in mind, this is 20% gel and uh, not 10% gel. So you're gonna get less penetration in these 20% ballistic shell blocks. So it sounds like someone's mowing or something back there. So I apologize if that's getting into the microphone, but now let's shoot the critical defense out of the Glock 43. All right, our critical defense out of the Glock 43 is the one on the very top there. And 
You can see the wound cavity a little bit better with this one. The bullet continued down the gel block, stopped right there. Once again, uh, looks like it expanded really well. And the critical defense out of the Glock 43, it looks like it stopped at about 10 and a half inches into our ballistics gel block. So with the critical duty, we didn't really get a difference out of the two pistols, at least I don't think so. We will look at these bullets and see uh, how they look. But with the critical defense, we got more penetration with the Glock 43. And uh, like I said, this bullet is designed for smaller guns. So uh, that extra penetration is a good thing. All right, I want to do one more test before we go. And I just dragged this car door up the hill and it is heavy. So I'm kind of short of breath right now. But uh, what I'm going to do is put a gel block over here and shoot through the car door into the ballistics gel and see how each of these bullets perform. Now this test should heavily favor the critical duty, so I'm sure it will do better, but I'm kind of curious to see uh, how these two bullets stack up. But first, I gotta get our ballistic gel block behind the car door. All right, we've already got four rounds in that gel block, so I'm not gonna shoot both bullets out of both guns. I'm gonna shoot the critical duty out of the Glock 17, since it's made for full-size guns, and the critical defense out of the Glock 43, since it's made for a uh, small carry gun. So we're gonna start with the critical duty out of the Glock 17. And there's our entrance hole on the front of that car door from the critical duty. Go around to the back here. There's our big old exit hole right there on the back side. And it's kind of hard to see uh, where it went in because of all the wound cavities, but you'll see when I go down the gel block here. And there's our bullet right there. It went all the way down the gel block. Looks like it did expand really well and actually went further through the car door than it did in the bare ballistic shell. And these are 16 inch gel blocks, so we know that this bullet went about uh, 15 and a half inches into our ballistic shell. So the critical duty actually did even better than I thought it would. So let's try the critical defense. All right, let's shoot the critical defense out of the Glock 43. And there's our entrance hole from the critical defense right above the critical duty. Go around to the back side here. There's our exit hole on the back side of the car door. And the critical defense is that one right there on the very top of the gel block. So it actually did go a little bit further than I thought it would. Uh, not nearly as far as the critical duty, but that's kind of what we expected. And I'll go ahead and measure this one. There was some bounce back in the gel block and uh, with that, it went about eight inches into our ballistics gel block. So not too bad for the critical defense really either. I mean, it only went an inch or two less than it did in the bare ballistics gel and uh, obviously nowhere near as much penetration as the critical duty, but these types of tests are where the critical duty shines and uh, that's kind of why I wanted to do this comparison before we wrapped up this video. All right, so here's the four bolts that I pulled out of the bare ballistic shell. The first two are the critical duties and the second two are the critical defenses. Now the first of each bullet are the ones that we shot through the Glock 17 and the second of each bullet are the ones that we shot through the Glock 43. So you can see that first critical duty and the first critical defense uh, definitely flattened out and expanded just a little bit more so that extra velocity uh, did contribute to that. Now with the critical duty, it didn't make a whole lot of difference as far as performance goes. With the critical defense, we actually did get quite a bit more penetration through the Glock 43, so it affected that one a little bit more. Now these are the two bullets that I shot through the car door, and you can see our critical duty right there on the left. It didn't really expand like I thought it did. It just kind of flattened out, but it did stay intact really well. Now the critical defense is uh, just a straight up piece of lead. So it looks like we completely lost the copper jacket from that critical defense that you see on these two bullets. And that car door just completely took the copper jacket right off of the critical defense. So obviously the critical duty did much better through the car door test.
Well, that's going to do it for me today, guys. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like I said, I've been wanting to do this one for quite a while, and uh, today we finally got out and got it done. But uh, this is all personal preference, really, whether you like the critical duty or the critical defense. It just all depends on what you're using it for and what your personal preferences are. I know a lot of police officers do like the critical duty uh, because of what we just saw in the car door test. It just penetrates barriers much better and uh, gets more penetration, whereas the critical defense is considered a better um, you know, concealed carry around because it's not going to over penetrate as much and hopefully will stop in the bad guy and um, reduce collateral damage. But uh, the 135 grain plus P critical duty is actually probably the more popular of the two. Um, but like I said, I ran out before I came out here today and didn't know it. So it even gets more penetration than the one that we shot today. So just keep that in mind and uh, maybe one day we'll do a part two and bring that one out as well. But I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up for me, guys. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.